music. Classical, country, jazz, metal, poop, uh, I mean pop. Isn't it lovely? So many varieties and shapes and emotional experiences. Music is a language all humanity resonates with. And some of my most favorite is music comes straight out of video games soundtracks. Most people will probably agree that music is nice. But what does music do in a game experience? I mean, you know, keeps you entertained while there's stuff happening on screen? Wrong! I have rung the wrong gong. It's the gong that is rung whenever you're wrong. You want to know what music can do? Here is a controversial take. Maybe not so controversial. Music is critical to the video game experience. Why is Enter the Gungeon only a 9 out of 10 in the Ben Fred rating system, even though I think it's the greatest roguelike to have ever rogued or liked? Because it's got doo doo music. Quick aside, and I really don't feel like I should have to say this, but it kind of feels like I need to say it. These things that I say are my opinions. They're not facts, it's just my opinions. It has moments of musical excellence, yes, but it's 90% doo-doo. Watch my series of videos about Enter the Gungeon and you'll win the lottery. Music is emotion. Music is the mood machine. Music infuses you with the motion and emotion that the director wants you to get in that moment. Music can take a moderate experience and make it excellent, and it can take a great experience and make it unforgettable. You're out of time. I'm begging you, leave now. It's what you taught me. Do the right thing. That's all that matters. Master Bruce, I implore you. You must get out of there. If this is about Miss Gordon, you cannot blame yourself for what's happened. Save yourself before it's too late. Goodbye, Alfred. <laughs> it's so good! It's so good! Here are two experiences that use music in the same way, but to dramatically different emotional effect. Spider-Man! You introduce Peter Parker with some funny Peter Parker quirks. <sighs> Then you jump out the window and Spider-Man is all, Well, yeah! Oh, yeah! Well, yeah! And you're playing the game. Great intro. Just a great intro. Just throws you into the thick of it. Now listen to it with the music. These two experiences are not even close. Ghosts of Tsushima does a similar thing with its intro, throwing you right into the thick of it with the gameplay. But the section I want to mention is the title card. Jin has lost everything. His uncle is captured. His samurai brethren have all been slain. He was just humiliated in a duel versus the Mongol leader. And he has established a rudimentary plan to take on an overwhelming force that is surely doomed to fail. and title card. Take the music out of this, and it's still pretty good. Still thematic, but you get those violins playing that devastatingly haunting melody. Perfect. 
Music informs the audience what the emotional experience is supposed to be, or it subverts the audience when the emotion of the music doesn't match the scene. Perfect way to unsettle your audience is when the emotion from the music and the emotion from the visual sequence are dissonant. That horrifying ghost woman is humming Debussy, and it makes me very uncomfortable. But when the emotion from the visual stimulus matches the emotion of the music, it's like slapping an exponent on your emotional variable. Think of that intro sequence of the film Up. I would play the music for it, but then Disney would come and assassinate me with copyright ninjas using copy claimed strike jutsu. I cry every time I see this intro. It's good without the music, but when the musical motif goes on the journey with you to reflect the emotion of the story, starting all happy and whimsical, then ending so devastatingly sad, music is like an emotional exponent. Now this isn't to say that music has to accompany visual mediums. I'm just saying that, for me, easily the most powerful vehicle for emotional expression is music. Then why don't you play music and do videos about music? Because music is hard and I'm a third brain person. Here is a fascinating article from a Dr. Sharam Heshmat. Who is this man, and why should we care? Who knows? But his article supports my claims and expressions, so I'm citing him in this video. This has been a lesson in how to win at both university essays and politics. Time for some music! Fire vape song! Yeah, sure, I mean, it's psychotic, but what's the emotion I'm supposed to be getting here? Whimsy? Super Mario World song. Still iconic, but it just isn't doing it for me. Yeah, I mean, you, you get on the Yoshi, it adds the drum track, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I changed my mind. This song is great. But you jump over from that Nintendo mascot to that Sega mascot. And it's like a boom. I don't know why I'm doing it the Italian when I'm talking about the Sonic music. Oh yeah, Sonic 3. Oh crap, now we're doing it. Oh yeah, and some of that Sonic 2. Green Hill Zone, iconic as heck. Listen to this bass lighted Mystic Cave Zone. That's not enough bass! Need more bass! Got it. You hit every emotional beat with this sonic music. Remember this in Sonic 3? Unforgettable. I could not even believe my eyes or ears as a child when I first saw and heard this. A unbelievable experience. Greatest. The Sonic music catalog is so full of bangers. It's insane. It's incredible. I mean, and then modern Sonic happened. 
and it all died. It, it just, it all fell apart. But then Sonic Mania comes out and we're right back in it. <laughs> Here is a list of my top five games. Number one, Chrono Trigger. Number two, Ocarina of Time. Number three, Shadow of the Colossus. Number four, Gunstar Heroes. Number five, God of War 2018. What do they all have in common? Stankin' good music. Chrono Trigger is easily the greatest video game soundtrack to ever happen. Unequivocally, the best. And if you think otherwise, you're a farty poo bum. You heard me. But we're saving that for the end. Ocarina of Time is a close second on greatest video game music. It's got that Gerudo Valley to get you pumped to meet the tall red-headed lady. Kokiri Forest. Lost Woods. Then some more wild stuff like Inside the Deku Tree. The Deku Tree has freed itself from the shackles of Melody, and he's likely been eating rotten mushrooms from the Lost Woods the way that this music is going. Discerning viewers will have noted that I have used Kapora Gabora's theme in multiple videos. <laughs> My roommate said almost instantly when I asked him what his favorite song from the game was, The Shadow Temple. That? That explains a lot about why my roommate is the way he is. And my roommate never watches my videos anyways, so he's never gonna see me goofing on him. And Zelda's theme? Great. Now I'm back to crying again. <laughs> but my personal favorite song from Ocarina of Time is the title theme. But what did you think about Breath of the Wild soundtrack? It was garbage! <laughs> it was flaming hot nonsense garbage. It was some goofus incidental music, like you have a guy just following you around with a piano. Quit following me! The depressing thing is that all the actually written themes were excellent. The Rito Village remix of Dragon Roots. The musical drama of approaching the castle. And the minigame music. This song is astoundingly good. This is amazing. But if you didn't do any of the Parasail minigames in the giant open world that is Breath of the Wild, you never even heard this song. But it's the best song in the game! Shadow of the Colossus will blow you away with its orchestra pieces.
Gunstar Heroes will explode your brain with its aggression. Gunstar Heroes doesn't get nearly enough props for how absolutely mind-melting its soundtrack is. The Gunstar Hero soundtrack is always on the move, which is a perfect reflection of the game. Music often creates strong action tendencies to move in coordination with the music, our internal rhythms, example heart rate, speed up or slow down to become one with the music. I mean, this is nice, but there's a boss coming up and I'm just too calm right now. I need something. It's like the exact opposite of chill beats to study to. Gunstar Heroes boss themes are aggressive beats to remind you that life is difficult and taxes are due. But then, climbing up scaffolding to get on a plane and it's all... There are too many great soundtracks to name in video games. Secret of Mana. Journey. Ghost of Tsushima. Doom 2016 Mario 64 Devil May Cry 5 F Zero Tekken Seven Street Fighter Two, just to name a few. There's so much incredible video game music out there. Now here's a question. Why is my top five list full of such old games? Memories are one of the important ways in which musical events evoke emotions. As the late physician Oliver Sacks has noted, musical emotions and musical memory can survive long after other forms of memory have disappeared. Part of the reason for the durable power of music appears to be that listening to music engages many parts of the brain, triggering connections and creating associations. Here's an example of this phenomenon. My older siblings loved The Cure, an 80s band, and so I grew up thinking The Cure was great. I still think The Cure is great. <laughs> well, though their style did not age well. But whenever I listen to the album Galore, I nearly instantly have memories of playing Half-Life 1 as a wee child come flooding back into my head. What kind of a strange child plays Half-Life 1 while listening to an album from an 80s alternative rock emo band? Me. That's what's kind. So a game you played when you were younger might elicit a strong reaction to both your remembering brain and your dopamine brain. <laughs> this is why Chrono Trigger can never be usurped as my top favorite game of all time. It's formed too strong a brain connection in my brain tissues. And powerful music is especially prone to bringing back that brain tissue brain remembering. Come on now, Beckham. You really thought I was gonna do a video talking about video game music and not mention Undertale? Now I get that Undertale music got memed to high heaven, but it's unbelievably good. Especially when you factor in that the person who wrote the music was also the person writing, coding, designing, and drawing the game. Seriously though, it's so, so impressive. I cannot believe that one guy 
was able to do so many different projects. The programming, designing, and the music. It's, they're not even the same kind of category of talent. And this is an unbelievable individual, Toby Fox. His music, so good. But where is the cello music? Cello is clearly the most superiorist instrument. Where is the cello? Journey's theme! I've cried enough today! Why did I sing this out? Evidence shows that people who consistently respond emotionally to aesthetic musical stimuli possess stronger white matter connectivity between their auditory cortex and the areas associated with emotional processing, which means the two areas communicate more efficiently. This potentially explains why I cry so much when listening to music. I have a white brain. <laughs> Video game music helps prove that cello is just the best instrument. I did a video on a game called The Gunk recently, and that game unequivocally, I keep using unequivocally, proves that cello is the best instrument with themes like this. And this. You want to hear more about the gunk's use of uh, music and uh, ambient aesthetic? Go watch that video. I was immediately turned off from buying the Link's Awakening remake. Because it's $60. <laughs> when at a maximum, it's worth $30. They took a Game Boy game from 1993 and gave it modern graphics. It's not worth Sixty... It's not worth sixty dollars. Take my money. Take all my money. Take all my money. Flynn, son of Crimson, has a level that is in a deep, dark, frozen cave. No respite in sight. Surrounded by enemies. All hope is lost. Then... This year, Horizon Forbidden West came out. Forbidden West went in on the cello music. Who composed for this game? Joris Deman? Is that his name or his title? Regardless, this demand knows the power of cello. How about the power to move you? Take maybe the most beautiful looking game that has ever been made to date and season it with cello. Unreal combination. And the cello was throughout the game experience. Some of the biggest machines have their own theme. Nessie's theme, cello. t rexus Saurus, cello. Batman, cello. Laser Dragon, cello. Actually, there's not. But the Laser Dragon has a particularly interesting effect where the music plays a riser as it's charging up to Super Saiyan. These little reactors on the side pop out and then the riser starts playing. 
and there's this tension that builds in you as you're desperately trying to blow up the reactors before it finishes charging, and the music intensifies the experience. Then when it finishes charging, it plays a stinger. And then we're into a different version of the song that's more intense because the dragon is now fully charged. And we're dead because the dragon was fully charged. Stormbird? Those are violins! Snake theme? Music makes a good experience great, and a great experience perfect. Cello does the same thing. Hashtag down with violins! Here is an example from Ghost of Tsushima. Listen to this drivel! Violins are for heretics. Now listen to this cello. Music elevates the video game experience, in my opinion, that expressive capacity in music is uncontested in media. Music is special in its ability to convey emotion. Regardless of culture or language or upbringing, you hear that deeply sad song, you feel it. You hear that joyous warmth of a happy song, you also feel it. You want a truly emotional moment, you need music to obtain it. Whether it's the depths of sorrow or the height of happiness, music is the means to get you there. Someone who perfectly understands that relationship between music and storytelling is Gareth Coker. Is that his name or its title? He did both Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and both are master classes in musical momentum. He gets you with the lows. And the highs. I'm just gonna let this one play for a bit. Ori dies right here. That's the end of the game. Psych! That's just the beginning of the game. I don't think I've ever seen a better connection between movement and emotion and music than expressed by Sir Gareth Coker in his scoring of these two Ori games. He takes this main theme and thrills you with it. Destroys you with it.
and leaves you in awe at it. Playing with motif better than I've ever heard in a game. Moon Studios are brilliant and talented individuals. And when you got somebody like Gareth Coker in your corner for the music, it's an unstoppable combination. This game is, this game is out of this world. Also, he did the music for Halo Infinite. Just some of it, not, not all of it. You got Halo Nostalgia Syndrome? Go listen to the Halo Infinite soundtrack and it'll hit you deep in the feels. My field! My field! Gareth Coker is easily one of the best to ever do it. Now to end, it's time for... The greatest video game soundtrack known to man. Chrono Trigger! Chrono Trigger, you got all those joyful and fun songs like Millennial Fair. That end of time. Wind scene. Frog theme. Robo's theme. Which basically is just never gonna give you up. You'll never be able to unhear that. <laughs> then you got moods like confusing melody as you traverse Magus's castle. Then you're fighting Magus and it's all. Or that unsettling undersea palace theme. Then if you're in a crying mood, just pull up some of that at the bottom of night. Then if you want to cry because of an entirely different emotion, there is Too Far Away Times. But that truly iconic music that will grab hold of you and never let you go is Corridors of Time. Yasunori Mitsuda is a legend. Just period. Nobody has ever been able to do it like Yasunori has done it. Best soundtrack conceivable for any medium. It's so good. It's unbelievable. Chrono Trigger is the greatness, the incarnation of greatness. It is so immaculately good. The only person, in my opinion, to even get close is Gareth Coker. That's how impacted by the music of the two Ori games that I was. Incredible. Uh, some people are going to be yelling at their, uh, you know, phone or screen or whatever. What about Nobuo Uematsu? You know, what about Nobuo? Well, guess what? Okay, 
yeah, he's good, he's a legend, whatever, his stuff is fine, but Nobuo and Yasunori worked on the same game. They both, that's right, they both worked on Chrono Trigger. And who had the bangers in Chrono Trigger? It wasn't Uematsu. Okay, that's too hot of a take. Nobuo Uematsu is... He... Yeah, you... Of course he's incredible. He's Final Fantasy. He is Final Fantasy. What's the consistency in Final Fantasy? It's Nobuo Uematsu. That was too hot of a take. Anyways, back to Corona Trigger. Don't even pretend with me like there is a better video game soundtrack. Now the question is, would I consider it the best game of all time if its music was mediocre or bad? Absolutely not. Just do a quick YouTube search of Chrono Trigger music and you'll get an idea of how beloved it is. Everything from Chrono Trigger synthwave mixes to acapella covers to full orchestras. People playing the entire soundtrack on solo piano. Multiple people doing that, actually. Smaller bands playing Chrono Trigger. OCRemix.org Oh, what is OCRemix.org, you ask? Basically, it's a nonprofit dedicated to curating awesome video game remixes and celebrating video game music as an art form. It's the best, and I love it, and I've been listening to these remixes since I was a child. What is the most remixed game in their site's history? It's Grotto Trigger. Of course it's Chrono Trigger. How could it be anything other than Chrono Trigger? That would just be a fallacy to express any other opinion than Chrono Trigger as the greatest video game soundtrack of all time. <laughs> Davey504 is playing Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Family Jules is playing Chrono Trigger. Super Guitar Bros are playing Chrono Trigger. Huh? John Oath, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is playing Chrono Trigger. Whoa. Shot is really playing Chrono Trigger. He's been my favorite musician who covers video game music for a few years now. And when he started popping off on Chrono Trigger music, undeniable greatest! This man is a good person. How can you tell if he's a good person or not? Well, he loves Chrono Trigger music. Why do all these talented people remix, arrange, and play video game music? Other than it's a way to capture a niche uh, audience and have a guaranteed in with a large YouTube watching demographic, which is gamers, it's because video game music is special. It's attached to a medium of interactivity unlike any movie or television experience could ever replicate. Because you control the character, the music is a backing track to your actions as the player. It's an emotional backing directly to you. You hear a beautiful track in a movie and it can have a profound emotional impact, but it will always be the backing track to just that character, that scene you're watching. Video game music is the backing track to you as you perform the actions of the character, and that gives it a special place of emotion and nostalgia in people's hearts. Also, these composers are just writing good music. Also, you hear the music for like 100,000 times longer than you do in a movie, so maybe it's just earworms its way into your brain. Here's a closing thought. Can you get away with not having good music in your game? Sure. 
You can also get away with all sorts of other malicious felonies. But that doesn't mean you should. Can you stand in the pantheon of greatest, most bestest games without a brilliant soundtrack? Heck no. Wait, does this mean I need to change my opinion about Enter the Gun-